Okay, this is being recorded. I'm Eric Paul Johnson. And I'm Eric Winsenson. And we should get moving because Eric's computer is being all wonky today and starting to make us sound like evil droids from Jabba's palace. So. Baba na bada. Oh, we're not going to go. I was going to say no, something no, about I, laying around naked and I look like Jabba. No, I was about to say, you are not going to wear the Leia bikini. Killjoy. <laughs> I got the moves for it. Yeah, so do I. But things that you can do doesn't mean you should do. Well, what we should do is get onto this while things are still working. Yes. <laughs> uh, get some comments about Ordinary Dream that were left over and about our uh, Zoomcast. Aaron Jansen says, best song on the album takes me on a journey every time. Although they don't necessarily sound the same, I'd put it in the same caliber as Jeff's Blown Away, another amazing song that is dusty and criminally unheard. I agree. But, you know, I like everything on Armchair Theater. Can't believe I blanked out on that for a second. Karen Godwin Harrison who said that she should look around the beaches where she lives in case Jeff um, happens to be strolling around carrying a little guitar, writing songs in his head. And I didn't know where the beach was. And she said, hi, guys, here is no here. No, I didn't know where here was. Here is Nova Scotia, over 13,000 miles of coast. So, you know, it might. I bet you Nova Scotia is pretty. I'd, I'd like to go there. Even though it doesn't strike me as a place where he'd be walking around in his shorts playing his guitar. No, no, no I did, you know, hey, well, I don't know. Global climate change, I'm sure pretty soon it'll be 130 degrees there. And bundled, bundled up like an old, like an old grizzled sailor, maybe. <laughs> Arr, let me tell you about the time <laughs> I saw the great whale. <laughs> See, I'm just picturing Jeff in that beard and man fur with an eye patch, and it's <laughs> it's as silly as Jeff is looking like a cowboy. So. Arr, don't bring me down. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if Jeff has done any songs about, well, Ocean Breakup, I guess. Uh. <laughs> I was thinking of any water or sailing related songs other than yeah. a go ghost Can't ship. get it out of my head. Oh, right. A doy. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Corey Gomel, best comments video ever. A couple of my comments and a commercial for Blue World. If Jeff sues you guys, call me. I'll handle the deposition work. The Jeff at Depot. <laughs> my first question, Jeff, I understand you have sued my client for copyright infringement. Recite to me the original lyrics of Holiday in Spain. Jeff, what does that have to do with the lawsuit? Corey, objection, non-responsive. I'm the lawyer here, Mr. Lynn. I will ask the questions. Easy, solid case. We can win this thing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. We will do a cease and desist for an original master of Beatles forever. <laughs> oh boy, here comes trouble. <laughs> uh-huh. It, he's hidden behind there. We're trying to do a, a show here. We're not just chatting now. We're actually doing a, a show. Okay, let's try and continue while your computer's working. So uh, comments about long time gone. Uh, I wanted to bring this picture up um, while we're doing it, but I don't know how to make pictures show up on a Zoomcast, so we'll have to do it this way. Um, this is from Corey Gomel. Get this. That's as best as we can do. Oops. That's not too bad. We got it looking pretty good, pretty decent there. My mom. Uh, get this. Uh, <laughs> my mom passed away of a heart ailment in 1989 at the young age of 49. That's way too young to be doing that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely too young. Yeah. My uncle yeah. Stephen died from a heart attack when he was 47. Of course, he also smoked for probably 30-something years. All right. I'm, I'm sorry, Corey. I can't read with because that's in, in the way of 
the stuff here. And my arm's getting tired holding it up. Um, she is all I think about when I hear this song. The photo is at my college graduation in, in 1986. So that was the picture I was holding up here. In 1981, she and my father came up to college to check and see if I was there. They heard a rumor that I had left college to join ELO. I'm not defecating you. Uh, they heard this most likely because I did attend ELO's first three dates of their North American leg of the time tour. All three dates were in Texas during the first semester of my freshman year. My grades were not great that semester. At that time, I met, had a backstage pass, partied with the band, and was invited back when they would be close to Texas again in Louisiana a month later. That's pretty freaking cool. You got socializing skills, not me. I, I, uh, later, I'll finish this. I remember the visit with my mom and dad recording my, regarding my priorities as we walked around the track at the football stadium. They were telling me I can't join a rock band and how I need to stay in school. And all the time they were talking, I was wondering if I missed an open invitation to join ELO. I guess the talk worked because I spent the last six semesters of college on the dean's list. That's pretty good. I made it a couple of times, but I have my suspicions. Uh, I, got on, I got on a few teachers' lists. I Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> As much as I hate, oh, six semesters of college in Nilos, okay. As much as I hate love songs, I love songs like this, Eric Winsenson. What a wordsmith. Had Tom Petty heard this line, he would have surely worked it into a song. Um, yeah, as I was about to sidetrack off of, boy, I really wish I had a studio and a chair <laughs> instead of sitting on this bed, banging into the microphone when I need to adjust. Um, yeah, you're the social butterfly. Uh, when I saw Colin Hay in 2011, he was up in Flagstaff at an art museum doing his concert there, about 300 people. And there was a meet and greet afterwards. And me being shy and intimidated by, holy crap, that's the guy from Men at Work. I love Men at Work and Colin. It's great. Um, other people were going up to him and I was the last one and I was me. I bought the CD that was there and I was me. I can, you, uh, yeah, I think, can, can we get a picture and the picture of me and Colin? Oh, it's too bad. I can't bring that up is, um, is actually, uh, for me, it's a pose because for that, that whole time I was, Oh, thank you. No, it's a good show. I, I liked it. Thank you. Autograph. Okay. Thank you. And then I scurried off and, um, I, I, I can't tell if maybe Colin was a bit unnerved by me. I would think he's run into people who've, you know, had the celebrity awe or if he was just tired and cranky. Cause he seemed kind of like, eh, like he just wanted to go home at that point because it was late at night and there was some drunken woman in the back trying to have a conversation with them shouting over the audience until Colin said, I can't hear what you're saying, so you probably should just stop talking. And then everybody in the audience was like, yeah. <laughs> they wanted her to shut up too. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I'm impressed that you met them and that you impressed them so much. They were like, hey, Corey, join the band, huh? Does that drunk woman just randomly show up at concerts? Uh, I swear that same drunk woman has shown up at residence concerts before and <laughs> I'm sitting and the rest of us are sitting there going, do you know where you are? <laughs> <laughs> this is a sit down and watch the show kind of concert. It's <laughs> yeah, no, she was like, Hey, Colin, Hey, you, can you play? I really love that one. Oh, that was great. And it's just. We're watching a concert. You can have a concert. You can have a conversation with him, with him at the meet and greet afterwards. Ah. Uh, and Corey, your mom was wise in 1981. Anyway, had this been 10 years earlier, I would say ignore your your mom for a little bit. Because uh, 1981, if you joined ELO, it's uh, 
it's a, you're, you're, it's, it's a bad time to join a group. But if you joined them in 71, that was a time, you know, when they're on the rise. So. Yeah. Well, do they need a cowbell player? <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know if Corey plays any kind of instrument. Yeah. Um, kazoo, I'm sure he could master that. Hmm. Electric light kazookastra. You're giving me ideas. Don't do that. <laughs> Jim Kahn says, Eric Paul Johnson. Terrific episode, guys. <laughs> I think that might have been an emoji that didn't quite transfer over to text. Ah, okay. Which is why the question <laughs> mark say, might be there. Like a, it looks like reverse and tarot bang, and I'm, okay, how do we do this? <laughs> yeah. Terrific episode, guys. Yeah, I think it was a terrific episode. Mike Hudson, he usually has a lot of things to say. He'll write the big, long paragraphs that uh, I find more insightful, insightful than anything I say in any of the episodes. So for this one, a long time gone, he said, not a whole lot I can add that wasn't said in the podcast. So I'll make this one short and sweet. I like the song. And that was it. <laughs> And hmm. Oh, well, no. Something came to mind, but I don't think it has anything to do with this. Okay. So <laughs> mm. Yeah, things creeping through my head. Um, yeah. Uh record store day was just recently and but there was no yellow stuff, unfortunately, for record store day. You know, even Dr. Uh, Demento had stuff for Record Store Day. Somebody, I know I e yeah, cool. See, yeah, somebody that was, that was last year. <laughs> ELO needs some better marketing people because the merchandise. Here's some shirts. Here's some hoodies. Here's a pin. You got the perfect prop that every ELO person wants. That from Discovery, that light up ELO. Everyone, you would sell millions of that. And Record Store Day. How come you don't have anything special for Record Store Day? I can understand before when you guys were, when the ELO, you know, popularity was down to about here. But in the last few years, it's just more and more. This is the time to cash in. But no. Yeah. Make up no, something like this. Yeah. No, I, would, I was able to get an unreleased uh, Elton John album. His psychedelic album that w that he made prior to releasing his stuff in 1970. I would Luckily, be. Luckily, it has Bernie Taupin were doing the lyrics on it, so it should probably be pretty good. So it's not I'm, Elton writing his own lyrics. <laughs> no, I'm interested in the psychedelic Elton John. I, 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 I'm having trouble picturing that. Can... But no, one of the big one of the big things was uh, three record Jonathan Winters set. Ooh, I heard about that on Doctor Demento. Yeah. Yeah, and I couldn't believe how many people actually wanted that thing afterwards. Because I thought I was the only person under 80 years of age that wanted a Jonathan Winter's three-record box set. Well, I'll take it, too. <laughs> okay, I think we run on ELO stuff. <coughs> yeah. Oh, next record store day, a bunch of monkeys stuff. Oh, man. About three or four volumes of call, of missing, uh, missing links. Right. I don't know. If I, I don't, some of it might have been released or something, but I don't know. I'm getting it all. <laughs> come on, ELO. Yeah, come on, ELO. You know how much people charge for vinyl? Could be, could be making more and making ELO fans happy. Unless you make them poor. That's true. Yeah. All right. I think we've done enough here. I think we're done here. I think we're done here, yes. 